Hey guys, it's Shank here. Today we're going to be recapping the story of Destiny 2's Season of the Chosen, which just finished up this week. To understand the context for Season of the Chosen, we need to talk first about where the Cabal are following the Red War, and everything that's occurred since then. After Dominus Gaul and the Red Legion left, and were defeated in the Red War campaign, their homeworld, Torabotl, was left relatively defenseless. Their largest and prized legion had been rendered asunder, and Callus, the former emperor, was sending assassins after those who had participated in the Midnight Coup. For those unfamiliar with the Midnight Coup, this was the night that Gaul and seven other conspirators overthrew Callus and exiled him on the Leviathan. One of those conspirators was in fact his daughter, Keitel. Keitel's primary problem with her father was she had felt the Cabal Empire had become complacent. She wanted them to return to their more ancient and warlike traditions. Fast forward to today, and Keitel is trying to pick up the pieces of a fractured empire left behind when Gaul took the Red Legion to the Soul System. She had begun to grow exhausted of the day-to-day -day politics involved with ruling the empire. One day while she was holding court, she received a complaint over something that she was able to address. A rancid smell had been emanating from one of her old mentor's quarters, Umun Arath, the Primus of all legions. When Keitel went to check on Umun, she found he had been experimenting on a lone hive thrall. Umun Arath was convinced he had found a future for the Cabal army. The hive had no fear. They would enter battle, not fearing their own death, not feeling loss, always just pushing forward into the next fight. For good reason, Keitel grew suspicious of Umun, suspecting he had been corrupted by some outside force. She was of course correct. Savathun, the Witch Queen, had corrupted Umun's mind. One day, Keitel found her former mentor in the middle of the city square of Torabotl, dressed only in a loincloth, ranting about a new god of war that the Cabal must serve. There are foreign glyphs all around Umun Arath. Keitel eventually is forced to kill a moon, and this accidentally starts a ritual which opens a massive portal in the sky over Torabotl. The hive god of war, Zivu Arath, emerges from the portal with his fleet of war moons and hive, and they begin to siege Torabotl. The Cabal are a very proud race, and they continue to fight back against Zivu Arath, but eventually Keitel understands that this is a battle they cannot win. She is able to convince her allies to retreat by convincing them that they must pull back so that they may regroup and strike from a more advantageous position. She chooses to head towards the soul system where the remnants of the Red Legion remained to try and reunify the Cabal Empire into one fighting force. This brings us to the start of Season of the Chosen. The season begins with a cutscene between Zavala, Osiris, and Keitel. Keitel's now seen the extent of the Hive army, and the looming battle ahead against the darkness. She proposes an alliance with Zavala, stating that with the Cabal Empire's vast resources and the Guardian's light, they'll be able to push back the Hive and then the Dark Fleet. However, negotiations break down when Keitel insists that Zavala must bow. Keitel and her war council allow Osiris and Zavala to leave, but both sides understand that they are on the precipice of war, and enemies surround them on all sides. After returning to the tower, we find that the Vanguard has set up a new station to battle against the Hive, the Helm. The Helm will serve as a staging grounds in our campaign against the Cabal. Osiris has an idea that may avoid all-out war. In an effort to fill out her war council, Keitel has returned to an ancient tradition of the Cabal known as the Rite of Proving. The right of proving pits two adversaries against each other to determine who is the more worthy. Cyrus believes we can use this ritual to fracture the Cabal and keep Keitel's war council empty. Anyone is able to issue a challenge, so the Vanguard High Command orders that all Guardians attempt to interfere in any and all rights of proving. The Cabal fleet has amassed outside of Nessus and Europa. Our first stop is at Nessus, where an old Red Legion commander named Dravis has decided to take up the challenge and enter the Rite of Proving. Though he remains loyal to Gaul even in death, he believes the Rite of Proving will be a way that he can enrich himself. 
After a short fight in the battlegrounds, we prove this is not the case. Dravis lays dead on the battlefield, and we have momentarily stopped the Cabal advance on Nessus. During the battle, we came across an old Cabal relic known as the Hammer of Proving. We return to the helm to discuss our plan of action with the Vanguard's task force, Lord Saladin, Osiris, and the Crow. Despite our initial success, it seems Cabal across the Soul System are rallying to Keitel's call, attempting to gain access to a seat on her war council. Osiris inspects the hammer that you've won at the battlegrounds. It was an offering, he said, from the Red Legion to Keitel. The Cryptarchs can provide a more nuance about its history, but what matters is its purpose. It's a symbol of Cabal culture, one you now wield. Osiris encourages us to now wield this hammer and shatter Cabal morale with one of their old relics. Lord Saladin demands a more aggressive approach, despite your most recent victories. The Crow has uncovered new information about a Cabal commander stationed on Europa. Commander Basilius, it seems, is looking for Golden Age relics and weapons. He intends to offer his findings to Keitel as a way to gain favor, as he holds no personal titles or glory, and sees this as his only way to make it onto her war council. You descend on Europa and stop Commander Basilius from gaining anything of value. Your efforts in this first week have prevented two commanders from taking their seat on Keitel's War Council. The following week, you hear of a new Cabal commander, Val Marag, who's now pushing into the Cosmodrome. This development is particularly concerning because if the Cabal want to launch an offensive against the last city, having a foothold in the Cosmodrome would be the perfect location to launch an offensive from. Valis Morag and his soldiers had been abandoned in the European Dead Zone for years following the defeat of the Red Legion. He had assumed this deployment had become a death sentence. But after hearing Keitel's transmissions, he finally saw a future for him and his comrades. Unfortunately, our guardian descends on the Forgotten Shore and enters the battlegrounds, summarily ending Val Morag and any hopes he had of ever leaving Earth. We return to the helm where we receive a transmission from Saladin. He believes Zavala is being too soft with the Cabal and that we should begin waging an all-out war. For the moment, however, he agrees to continue with Commander Zavala's plan. The next week, Vanguard scouts start reporting about a Scion detachment that's pushing deep into Vex-controlled territory in the inner core of Nessus. Led by a scion known as Ixel the Far-Reaching, these scions are looking into Vex prediction engines, which may give the Cabal a tactical advantage in their war against the Vanguard. Saladin is willing to admit that Osiris should take the lead here as he has more experience with the Vex. Though we are able to stop Ixel the Far-Reaching, we're ultimately unsuccessful in our attempt to stop the Cabal from accessing the prediction engines. When we return to the helm, Osiris tells us that this is a very concerning development. What could the Cabal want with Vex prediction engines? Saladin decides that we must act swiftly and pressure the Cabal before they're able to launch a counteroffensive. With each defeat, the Cabal become more fractured, and Keitel loses her grip on power and authority. While we continue to fight the Cabal on the battlegrounds, Saladin sends Crow to uncover more intel about what Ixel was able to uncover. Crow's report is harrowing. The Cabal, it seems, were looking into multiple futures where Zavala had suffered his final death. The Crow believes that the Cabal will try to act on these predictions, and that Zavala's life is in imminent danger. The Crow asks us for help in uncovering what the Cabal might be up to. After a long quest stretching from Europa to the EDZ, we end up in Legion's Anchor, after wreaking havoc on the base, we are directed to Sky Dock 4 in the Sunken Isles. There, we find something horrifying to behold. It seems the Cabal have been able to miniaturize the light-disrupting tech that Gaul had originally used on the Traveler. These disruptors, it seems, work by attaching themselves to a ghost and severing its connection to the Traveler, leaving the Guardian vulnerable to their final death. Lord Saladin is understandably outraged by this development and says we need to strike back at the Cabal with overwhelming force. Saladin is convinced that Keitel has shown her true colors. He urges all Guardians to descend on Cabal territory and strike them with overwhelming force. He believes they have invited death upon themselves. 
As tensions rise, we turn to a cutscene where we see Zavala walking among the gardens, reflecting on how far the city has come. While he's exposed, a single scion had managed to sneak inside the city's defenses. Right before the scion is able to fire a debilitating shot at Zavala's ghost, the crow, hidden in the bushes but not wearing his mask, is able to warn Zavala before disappearing back into the shadows. Zavala reacts, silencing his scion assassin, but when he turns back to look for Crow, he was gone. Zavala, unaware of the Crow's true identity, believes he has just seen a specter of the murderer Aldrin Sov. We return to the helm, where we are able to discuss what has just occurred. Saladin is furious that the Cabal would stoop so low and act as cowardly as to send an assassin in the night. He doubles down on his efforts to weaken the Cabal by killing every commander they have in the system. Crow, on the other hand, seems to be reflecting on what just happened. He apologizes for making a mistake as easily avoidable as not having his mask on when he was in the presence of Zavala, but also states that he doesn't apologize for acting when he did. He did, after all, save the commander's life. The next week, the commanders at the helm discuss the escalating brutality that seems to be occurring in this conflict. Saladin believes this is the perfect time to strike a final blow against the Cabal. However, Osiris and Zavala seem to have come up with an alternative solution. Zavala and Osiris plan to issue a final confrontation against Keitel. The winner would dictate the terms of the armistice. If the Vanguard wins, the Cabal must retreat from Earth and recognize the Guardian Vanguard as its own independent and sovereign government. If Keitel's champion was to win, Zavala would be forced to bend the knee and become Baracus Zavala, and the last city would become subservient to the Cabal Empire. Keitel accepts this challenge. Commander Zavala and Empress Keitel each choose their champion to face off in a final battleground to decide the victor of this conflict. We descend on the Imperial land tank that's landed on Nessus, the Halfus Electus. We charge through the land tank, taking out any Cabal who stand in our way. When we finally confront Empress Keitel's chosen champion, we make quick work of slaying our adversary. As a result, Keitel agrees to an armistice. Keitel and Zavala meet again to participate in an ancient Cabal ritual, which will seal their peace and blood. Before the ritual is completed, however, a lone scion, unbeknownst to Keitel, fires a shot which incapacitates Zavala's ghost. While exposed, a scion on the ground then attempts to assassinate Zavala, but Crow jumps in front of the scion and takes the brunt of the attack. Keitel then grabs the scion and instantly kills him. Zavala turns towards his savior and for the first time sees the face of his protector. As he peers into the eyes of Aldrin Sov, he extends a hand. Zavala knows better than anyone else that when a guardian is risen, he is not the same person as he was before. Zavala turns to Keitel and sees the corpse of the would-be assassin at her feet. The tentative peace stands, and Keitel claims that she will get to the bottom of these would-be assassins and root them out. All Cabal are to retreat from Earth, and any who are not are branded criminals by the Empire. We return to the Tower and speak of the events that just unfolded with Zavala. He feels betrayed by our need to keep secrets from him, and urges that we must trust each other, or else be torn apart from the inside, as the Cabal have been. Crow's identity is still being kept under wraps. While the Vanguard High Command is all aware of his identity, they prefer that we take a slow approach to spreading that information. His gallantry, however, has earned him a place in the city. He is now an official guardian of the Vanguard. Despite his unease, Crow seems pleased with Zavala's acceptance of him. He expresses that he feels personal responsibility to track down any of the Scion actors that remain at large. He looks at his broken mask and mumbles something about a vendetta, and a wry smile forms on his face. Crow wishes you the best and thanks you for all that you've done for him, for how many doors you've opened, and the life you, Osiris, and Glint have showed him he could have. That wraps up the story for Season of the Chosen so far. 
Personally, I feel like this is the strongest storytelling Bungie has had in its seasonal model. But really, what matters is what you think. Comment down below, let us know what you think of the story so far. We plan to do another review and discussion of the season sometime in the coming month. But for now, this has been Shank with PSG. Stay tuned here for all your latest gaming news reviews and discussions.